Well, I can tell you when we first started in 1999, it was very rare to see female uh, mariachi musicians, which is why it was so special when I was invited to be part of Mariachi Las Alondras as you know a musician, not ever have played mariachi before. I believe Colobri is gonna be part of your show. Yeah, and the founder of Colobri was actually an original Alondra. So um, I was able to join in, in that group of, you know, inspiring musicians and um, they taught me a lot, you know, about the music and, and it, it was cool to, to start out not knowing anything with a clean slate because you just absorb everybody and you, you know, you just learn so much at one moment. It's, it's almost overwhelming. And, um, and uh, I realized how, how, I realized really quickly how determined these women were in my circle that I had just jumped into to do it on their own. They were, we can do this. We can do just as good of the boys. And I, knowing how powerful and strong they wanted to be, I saw a lot of pain from their past, maybe being told you can't do this because you're a woman. You can't play this music. You can't be in the music business because maybe um, the Latin side, you know, Mexican uh, households tend to, you know, the men, you know, back in the day, the man would work and the woman would sit home. What do you mean you're not going to be out in bars and cantinas working? And and um, I saw that these women were showing, no, we are educated. We went to college. We have degrees and we're playing music and we're single moms and we're married moms and we're everything. We can do it all just like a man. And, and I saw that strength and I, and I I agreed with that completely. You know, I had also come from a world where I was told you can't do this. It didn't uh, really have much to do with uh my culture background uh, more than the fact that I picked up a trumpet, which was a boy's instrument. So it was more towards my instrument. Like, what do you mean? You can't play trumpet. You're a girl. But imagine when I jumped into the mariachi world, I had so many marks against me. I was female. I was running a group. You know, when I started my own band, I was a boss. Now I was a gringa and I was playing trumpet in a male dominated music. Um, so you know, it was powerful. And, and little by little, I realized every mariachi restaurant that you walked into would have a male group. And if anything, they had one female with them. My idea with the divas was if we could get that one female out of every restaurant, you know, that gets to sing one song an hour. Yeah. Oh, she's just the token girl. Let's make sure she's pretty and sings one pretty song and we'll use her to be that girl. And it's like, no, she can sing the whole hour if you want. She's strong, yes. you know, yes. so we can get all those women together and, showcase the strength and and drive you know how powerful that would be and that's kind of where the divas came along and um and you know everybody said why diva i got a lot of uh critica you know people being critical in 1999 when i chose that name because in that moment there was no you know ww wrestling divas and there wasn't you know barely the vh1 diva so people right. People consider Diva in that moment, you know, uh, Aretha Franklin or Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston. And that's exactly what I thought. I said, why not? Why can't we be the mariachi diva? You know, why not? And I wanted a name that could be translated into any language the same. I was I didn't want to choose a name that I couldn't even pronounce correctly. It's like, oh, this is my band and I can't pronounce my own name because it's got some you know, accent that I can't say correctly. And, and I knew we had, we had, you know, women from Japan and from Switzerland and everybody was Mexican or American, you know, it was, it was a wide range. So I thought diva is perfect because you just can't change it. It's diva. It's diva, no matter where you're from. And everybody would know that diva means talented, number one, beautiful, strong, you know, uh, just everything that you think of when, you th well, not the bad stuff, you know, not the, not the, you know, I'm a diva. I want blue M and M's in my cup. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you know, you know, no, not that kind of diva, but strong and talented. So, um, it, it's been a hard road for the women of mariachi. I'm not somebody that grew up with it. I grew up on a different side, um, so I'm not the best person to ask about growing up with that kind of. Uh, no, you can't do this because I had very, very open doors and very welcoming doors. And my only problem, like I said, was why aren't you playing the flute or being a cheerleader when I was nine or eight when I picked it up? Uh, it wasn't cultural for me, and it wasn't. A, I was never uh, put down because of the music. I it was always invite. Like when I played the, in the salsa bands, it was like cool. Let's let's do this. It was never about me being a woman. It was about my instrument. So for me, it was more of like what I saw. This is my opinion and what I view, but I can't say from personal experience as a woman, um, I was hurt. I can say from personal experience as a female gringa band leader in the world of mariachi, it's been very hard. Yes, very, very, very hard. Right. Um, and I think that was my problem.
I think that was my biggest battle was just having proven that I have a place here. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't, I didn't grow up in a Mexican household. I didn't grow up speaking Spanish. I didn't grow up listening to all these beautiful songs, but why can't I start now? Why can't I be the door that opens up for so many new people and new ears because they're visually going to see a group that they know is not from Mexico and say, Hey, if they can do it, I can do it too. Or if they can do it, my daughter can do it. And how many doors have opened because of that. And I feel like I became that, that outlet, you know, for people to say, Hey, I can do that. She can do it. I can do it. And even winning the Grammys, you know, that was a really big deal in 2009 being the first female mariachi to ever be nominated for a Grammy and to win that same year with such a prestigious group, like Mariachi Los Camperos winning together. Um, huge two mariachis making history that day and since that point how many women now have recorded and produced their own albums written their own music submitted to the grammys become grammy winners themselves or latin grammy winners and i think that's so cool like there's no competition there's no competition in this business and i think that people have the wrong idea they assume because i'm a band leader that i'm in competition with everybody and the way i look at at it is it's an it's an honor i feel like it's an honor anybody who has left my band or we've worked together at some point and has been successful means we did good things together we learned from one another and we became leaders together and as leaders we're building other leaders through new generations and that's what i feel absolutely about your uh, your other groups you know i'm very proud that they're successful because if they weren't successful what does that say about the time i had with them did i not influence them did we not influence one another and education is everything. And um, I encourage that in my shows too. And, you know, that's, I want, definitely want to say that being here on a, in a college uh, environment that uh, you can do it all. You can be a rock star, you can get a degree. Um, I've had at least five women in my, through my band in the last two decades that have been doctorates of music. And that's pretty amazing. So yeah, definitely. Um, very, very proud of that. Master's degrees, doctorates, full ride scholarships. And I always encourage the 18 year olds that pop right out of high school that they need to stay in school and make this a job that they can work around their school schedule, not to just give it up. Because if there's one thing on my bucket list, it would be, man, I wish I could have finished, got my master's, got my doctorate and included that in, in these conversations. But I wanted to be a rock star right away and go for it. And I always tell people, don't make that mistake because once you have kids, once you get those responsibilities in life, it's very hard to go back and finish. So to definitely stay in school and still pursue your dreams. And my one message to all the ladies out there is don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because I'm living proof that you can do whatever you choose to do. Don't let anybody else dictate your future, your path. You know, nothing is impossible. Nothing. I never imagined when I was 15, I would be able to speak two languages, play salsa, you know, mariachi music. These are things that were not even in my thought. And here we are today. So um, stick with your dreams. And new dreams are always going to come up, you know, the new people you meet and go for it. Take the chances, take the risk without risk. You never know. And you'll always have that. What if in your head, take it. You can't lose. There's nothing to lose. 